next presentation will review how to complete the budget narrative template. The budget narrative template provides an expanded and more detailed representation of the budget needed to complete the proposed project than was provided in the concept proposal phase. Please note that for the grant proposal phase, all budget information should be provided in this budget narrative template. No changes should be made to the concept proposal budget template that was submitted in the concept proposal phase. To begin, download the template from the budget narrative section in the FAST application or from the SEBGP website and save it to your computer. There are 11 pages total in the template, but there's no minimum or maximum number of pages for your completed budget narrative. We ask that you do not change the formatting of the template except to add or delete rows in the tables as needed. Please leave it as a Word document with 12-point aerial font and one-inch margins. Since development of the budget is such an important part of the grant proposal, we'd like to point out a few of the resources available for guidance in this process. First, the request for concept proposals is still a valuable reference for outlining USDA and CDFA requirements. Within the grant proposal instructions, you'll find information about the federal cost principles, unallowable costs, indirect and direct costs, and travel in the, in the requirements and limitations section, along with an example of a completed budget narrative in Appendix C. For more information on allowable and unallowable costs and activities, this can be found in the allowable and unallowable cost and activities table, available through a link in the grant proposal instructions and on the SCBGP website. The procuring goods and services supplement, also available through a link in the grant proposal instructions and on the SCBGP website, provides guidance on the federal regulations for procurement transactions. For more about the federal regulations used to determine allowable costs and ensure consistent treatment of costs, you can access the federal cost principles through, a link, through links in the grant proposal instructions or by a quick Google search. Remember that state, local, or Indian tribal governments, nonprofits, colleges, and universities are subject to the 2 CFR 200, and for-profit organizations are subject to the 48 CFR subpart 31.2. And last but not least, if you have questions, we encourage you to participate in our question and answer process. Within the budget narrative, you'll provide a detailed breakdown and justification for all project costs. As you develop your grant proposal budget, ensure that all costs are necessary for the project, well justified, and are clearly linked to the project activities and objectives. It should be clear why costs are requested and how they relate to activities listed in the project objectives and work plan. We understand that your budget narrative is a best estimate based on current information. However, we ask that you do your homework to make sure your estimates are reasonable and are not over or understated. Providing a breakdown of the cost per unit helps clarify how the estimate for each cost was calculated. Please do not enter lump sums with no breakdown or explanation. Costs should also be incurred in a manner consistent with the applicant organization's established practices. And all costs must be allowable per the federal cost principles and USDA and CDFA requirements. If your project is selected for funding, CDFA will remove all unallowable costs and activities as a condition of receiving an award, which means the budget could be decreased and project activities could be affected. Now let's review the template. The budget narrative is divided into nine categories. The first eight categories, A through H, will determine the total SEBGP funds requested. There is a program income section at the end of the budget narrative that should only be completed if the project includes activities that will generate income during the grant duration. I'll go over this section in more detail later in the presentation. At the top of the budget narrative, enter the proposal identification number, or PIN, assigned to your project in FAST, and the total amount of SEBGP funds requested for your project. As mentioned, this is the sum of budget narrative categories A through H and should match the amount listed under funds requested in FAST. Please make sure the total amount requested is within the allowable range and rounded to the nearest dollar. Category A is for the salary and wages expense for employees working on the project. This section should only include people employed by the applicant organization. If people from other organizations will be paid with grant funds, those costs should be listed under contractual. In the salary and wages table provided, enter each employee's name if known and their title or role in the project. Note that if the name of the employee is not yet known, enter to be determined. Next, enter the level of effort as percent full-time equivalent or number of hours to be worked over the entire grant duration, and finally, the funds requested. Below the table, provide a justification for each employee listed, 
Briefly summarize duties and identify the project objectives, including the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template that each employee will be responsible for completing. It's important to note that every person who will be paid with grant funds must be responsible for activities and the project objectives and work plans. To calculate the funds requested for a salaried employee, multiply their annual salary by the grant duration, which is two and a half years, then by their percent full-time equivalent. To calculate the funds requested for an hourly employee, multiply their hourly wage by the number of hours to be worked over the entire grant duration. Here is an example of a budget that includes three employees. Below the table, there is a justification for each employee working on the project. Note again that each employee's justification must identify which project objectives their activities support. Category B is for the fringe benefits expense for employees working on the project. Fringe includes benefits like paid leave, health insurance, and unemployment, and is calculated as a percentage of an employee's salary or wages. This percentage should be determined in accordance with the applicant organization's established fringe benefits policy. In the table provided, enter each employee's name and their title or role in the project as was done in the salary and wages table. Then enter the fringe benefits rate and the funds requested. To calculate the funds requested for each employee, multiply their salary and wages by the fringe benefit rate. Here's an example of an employee that will receive $55,000 in salary for work on the SEBGP project as noted in the salary and wages category and has a fringe benefits rate of 19%. 19% of 55,000 is $10,450, which is entered under funds requested. The same calculation should be performed for each employee listed. Projects related travel expenses will be listed in category C. The expenses listed here should be in support of project activities for all individuals except contractual personnel. If the project has contractors that will be traveling as well, these costs should be listed under the contractual section. Costs may not exceed those established by the U.S. General Services Administration or GSA. These rates vary by location, so be sure to look up the appropriate rates using the GSA website. If selected for funding, your travel budget will be reduced to comply with the lesser of the applicant organization's established travel policy or the GSA rate. Also, in accordance with California Assembly Bill 1887, state-funded and state-sponsored travel to states with discriminatory laws is prohibited. SCBGP funds cannot be used to support costs for travel to states with active discriminatory laws. As of the issuance of the 2020 SCBGP grant proposal instructions, the following states are subject to this prohibition. Alabama, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, and Texas. For each trip included in the travel table, the following information will need to be provided. First, the trip destination city and state. If the exact destination is not yet known, please provide an approximate destination city to use as a basis for calculating the travel cost requested. This is important since GSA rates can vary widely within a state, county, or region. Each type of expense for a given trip, for example, uh, hotel, airfare, mileage, etc., should be indicated on a separate line in the table. I'll show an example of this on the next slide. Within the same line for each type of expense, specify the unit of measure for that expense, for example, nights, round trip flights, miles, etc., the number of units for that expense, the cost per unit, the number of individuals that will be claiming that expense, and the total funds requested for the expense. Below the table, indicate the approximate dates of travel for each trip and provide an explanation of how the trip will achieve the project objectives and outcomes. Again, be sure to include the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template. And also remember to include all trips as activities within the work plan. This, this example includes four separate trips. For trip one, the destination is Monterey, California, and there are three associated expenses, mileage, hotel, and meals. On the mileage line, 360 miles um, are requested at a cost of 57 and a half cents per mile. There's only one person claiming the mileage expense because both people will be traveling together in the same car, and multiplying these three numbers results in $270 under funds requested. The next expense is lodging. The unit of measure is nights, 
and the number of units requested is three. The cost per unit for the hotel is $161 per night, which is in accordance with the GSA rate for Monterey in the month of November. Two people will be traveling, so two separate hotel rooms are requested for a total lodging cost of $966. The third and fourth expenses requested are for meals. Note that the rate for per diem is different for the first and last day of travel where only two meals can be claimed versus full travel days where 100% of the per diem can be claimed. Please be sure to check the GSA website for both first and last day of travel and full per diem rates as CDFA may remove costs over the allowable GSA rates as a condition of receiving funding, which means that indicating the full rate instead of the first and last day of travel rate could result in the budget being decreased. For these lines in the table, the unit of measure is days, and the number of days requested is two. The, co the cost per unit um, for meals is 57 per day in accordance with the GSA rate for Monterey for the first and last day of travel, and meals are requested for both of the people traveling, which totals to $228. The expenses are broken out in the same way for the remaining three trips in the example, and the total for all travel is provided at the bottom of the table. In addition, there is a justification provided for each trip requested that lists the approximate date of travel, um, indicates who will be traveling, the city of origin and destination city, and the purpose of the trip. Also note the objective number from the project objectives and work plan template is indicated to show the project objectives that the travel supports. Category D is for cost to purchase scientific research equipment required for the project. Items must have an acquisition cost that equals or exceeds $5,000 per item and must be used only for research or scientific activities. Note that all non-scientific items that cost more than $5,000 are considered general purpose equipment. Costs to purchase general purpose equipment are unallowable under the SEDGP. However, general purpose equipment needed for the project may be rented. Costs for rented equipment should be included in the budget category G other. Scientific research equipment is non-expendable, tangible personal property with a useful life of more than one year. In the table provided, enter the name and manufacturer of the item, the grant year it will be purchased, and the amount of funds requested. Below the table, provide a justification for each piece of scientific research equipment that includes an explanation for why the equipment is necessary for the project and how it will be used to achieve the project objectives and outcomes, along with the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template. In this example, the project will require one piece of scientific research equipment. The name and manufacturer of the item are provided in the table, and as required for this budget category, the item costs more than $5,000. Provided below the table is a justification describing why the equipment is needed and clearly linking it to the project objectives. Category E is for cost to purchase project supplies. Supplies include any items costing less than $5,000 per unit. The supplies category should not include any general use office supplies such as paper, printer, ink, or pens, as these are considered indirect costs. These are not allowable as a direct cost unless they will be used solely and specifically for a project activity and can be directly assigned to such an activity relatively easily with a high degree of accuracy. All supplies must be tied to specific project activities. In the table provided, enter the type of supply to be purchased, the cost per unit, the number of units, when the supply will be purchased, and the funds requested. Below the table, provide a justification for each supply, describing how the supply will be used to achieve the project objectives and outcomes, and identify the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template. This is a brief example. The per unit cost for supply one sample containers is listed as $5 for a pack of 20, and four packs are required. $5 per pack times four packs results in $20 under funds requested. The funds requested for the rest of the supplies in the example are calculated in the same way, and the total for all supplies is provided at the bottom of the table. Please note again that the amount in the cost per unit column should not exceed $5,000. Any item with a purchase price that is equal to or exceeds $5,000 per unit should not be included here. However, note that the amount in the funds requested column for a type of supply may exceed $5,000 total. Below the table is a brief justification explaining why the supplies are needed and linking them to the project objectives. 
A more detailed explanation than what is provided here may be needed depending on the supply requested. Category F is for expenses associated with purchasing goods and or procuring services performed by an individual or organization other than the applicant in the form of a procurement relationship. Projects with contractual costs must provide the following. The name of each contractor, the fee structure for each contractor, for example, salary and wages, fees for professional services or a flat rate, and the total amount of funds requested for each contractor. Below the table, provide a justification for each contractor that describes the project activities the contractor will accomplish and identifies the project objectives the contractual services will support, including the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template. Again, it's important to note that every person, including contractors who will be paid with grant funds, must be responsible for activities in the project objectives and work plan. Additional justification is required if a contractor's salary and wages or fee for professional services exceeds the general schedule or GS 15 Step 10. The GS 15 Step 10 provides the maximum rate for contractors determined by the Office of Management and Budget for your area and can be accessed using the link provided in the budget narrative template. Additional justification is also required if the contractor will utilize a flat rate fee structure. There is a procuring goods and services using federal fund supplement, which provides more information available on the SCBGP website. This is an example of a project with two contractors. The table lists the contractor organizations, specifies the fee, the fee structure that will be used for each, and indicates the total amount of funds requested. Below the table is a justification for each contractor. The justification for contractor one explains why a salary in excess of the GS 15 step 10 is appropriate. The justification for contractor two details why a flat rate fee structure is used. Keep in mind that this is just a general example and ensure you provide adequate detail and thoroughly justify your contractual expenses. Within the contractual budget category, in addition to the contractual table and justifications, an additional breakdown of expenses is required for contractors uh, using a salary and wages or fee for professional services fee structure. For these fee structures, a breakdown of all costs for budget categories A through H is required. Tables are provided for the first contractor and can be copied as, in, as needed for additional contractors. Please note that a breakdown of costs is not required for flat rate contracts because all associated costs, such as supplies and travel, are included in the flat rate. In the example, contractor one will use a salary and wages fee structure, so a breakdown of costs for section A through H is required. Contractor two will use a flat rate fee structure, so a breakdown of costs for sections A through H is not required because all of these costs are included in the flat rate. This is what the breakdown would look like for a contractor using a salary and wages or fee for professional services fee structure. This example only shows budget categories A, B, and C, but a breakdown should be provided for all budget categories where expenses will be incurred. This is a one, this is a one set of blank tables are provided, so copy these tables again as needed for additional contractors. For a more thorough example, review the sample budget narrative provided in Appendix C of the grant proposal instructions. Category G is where project-related expenses not covered in any of the other budget categories should be listed. Expenses listed under other can include costs for hosting meetings, conference registration fees, rental expenses, and publishing project results in professional journals. In the table provided, enter a description of the expense, the cost per unit, the number of units to be purchased, when the expense will be incurred, and the funds requested. For each expense listed in the table, provide a justification describing how it will be used to achieve the project objectives and outcomes, and as for all of the other budget categories, identify the objective numbers from the project objectives and work plan template. Note that if costs for meals or refreshments for meeting attendees are requested, an adequate justification to support that the meal is necessary for the continuity of the meeting is required. Be sure to provide the estimated number of attendees and the cost per meal, which cannot exceed the GSA rate for the meeting location. In this example, there are two expenses. As with the other categories in the budget narrative, multiply the cost per unit 
times the number of units needed to determine the, amounts of fund, the amount of funds requested. The justification explains why the costs are needed and how they relate to the project objectives. And finally, Category H is for indirect costs. Indirect costs are costs incurred for common or joint objectives that cannot be identified specifically with a particular project, program, or organizational activity. These include things like IT services, rent, utilities, and internet service, general office supplies, insurance, and maintenance. Indirect costs are calculated as a percentage of total personnel costs. In the table provided, enter the total personnel costs, which are the sum of category A salary and wages plus category B fringe benefits, the indirect cost rate, which is 8% maximum, and the funds requested. In this example, the total personnel cost is $94,860. The indirect cost rate requested is 8%, so the total indirect funds requested is $7,589. Note that an indirect cost amount exceeding 8% of total personnel costs may result in a project being disqualified. The program income category is where you'll describe any income that your project might generate as a result of grant-supported activities during the period of performance. An example of a source of program income would be registration fees for events hosted as a result of grant activities. Most projects will, will not generate any program income and no preference is assigned either way. Program income cannot be used as profit and must be spent before the end of the grant period in compliance with restrictions on allowable and unallowable costs and activities. In the table provided, include a description of the source of program income, a detailed explanation of how the income will be reinvested into the project in support of project activities, and the total amount of estimated program income. In this example, the applicant will generate $5,000 in program income by charging a $50 workshop registration fee. The income will be reinvested back into the project and will be used to enhance specialty crops. If your project will generate program income, an explanation of the specific activities that will be paid for with the program income must be provided. When all sections of the budget narrative are complete and the final version is saved on your computer, you're ready to attach or upload the document to your grant proposal application using the Attachments tab in FAFT. The budget narrative must be attached as a Microsoft Word document. Please do not submit a PDF file or any other file type. Given that the budget is a key part of the overall grant proposal, there are a few issues related to the budget narrative template that could result in disqualification of a grant proposal. These include forgetting to attach a budget narrative, attaching a blank file by mistake, attaching an unreadable or corrupt file, modifying the template, using a previous year's version of the template, or accidentally attaching the wrong file. Requesting a total amount of SCBGP funds that is less than $50,000 or greater than $450,000. Requesting indirect costs in excess of the 8% of total personnel costs or including excessive unallowable costs. And finally, a few reminders to keep in mind as you work. Please do not include any cost sharing or references to cost sharing in the budget narrative. All cost sharing should be listed in the cost sharing template. The budget narrative should include only costs that will be paid for with SCBGP funds. Be sure to round all costs to the nearest dollar. And please double check your math to make sure everything adds up and your totals are correct. There is a lot of detail required in the budget narrative and we encourage getting an early start working on it. And again, remember that we're available to answer your questions. Questions should be sent via email and received before the deadline on February 10th at 8 a.m. And that concludes the budget narrative presentation. Thank you.